Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over modules in Terraform. And what modules allow you to do is group multiple resources together in like a, a package type thing. So you can just basically put multiple resources in, in one like configuration, and then other configurations can call that module. So maybe you have like a web server set up where you need a subnet, an instance, security groups, um, and different things like that. Well, you can package that all together in a module, and then you can call that module from a different configuration and just pass in the required uh, parameters that you need. You can kind of think of modules like, like packages in Python or modules in JavaScript uh, in that type of sense. So, so same type of concept and, and everything like that. So we've actually been working with modules all the, this whole time. Basically, in Terraform, everything has a parent module. So if you look here, we have our file, a basic main.tf file that we've kind of been working at, and, and we've got a VPC, a subnet, and an instance. Well, this is actually technically a module. So this is like the a parent, the root module of Terraform. So everything always has that root module, and then you have the child modules as well. So the child modules are basically what we will, will be going over. So what we're going to want to do is, like, we've got the same configuration with an instance and a subnet and a VPC. Well, maybe we have a web server and we have multiple developers that need to create their own web server. So let's, let's package up this AWS instance and this subnet into its own module. So then other developers that are just need to build out their configuration quickly, they don't have to worry about, like, specifying an instance or a subnet. They can just quickly come in, write their configuration, and, and specify some parameters to a module. And then that module can just take care of everything that needs to set up the web server. So we're keeping this simple. So we're just going to have a subnet and an instance. But you might have you know, a security group, a, a SQL database, or an RDS, or, or something like that, or even a load balancer. You, you, know, you never know. So, so let's just dive right in and, get, and abstract this stuff out. So if you look here, my my folder structure, I have, I'm mainly working in this course folder. And then I, I have this setup. So I have a setups here. So we'll keep our regular configuration here that we'll use, but we'll also create a modules directory. And this modules directory will hold all of our, our child modules that we might want to set up for our entire system or like, you know, or in a whole configuration, you know, because we might have a, module for, for a web server. Maybe we have a module for an internal, you know, setup type thing, an internal load balancer, um, and different things like that. So another thing I didn't talk about a second ago, uh, modules, you can actually publish modules to to Terraform, kind of like a, a package registry um, in, in Python or, or Node. We're going to go over just local modules for right now, but you can you can bring down modules that other people have actually created or the module you created, you can actually submit to the Terraform registry as well. Let's start by now. Let's let's create a modules directory. Right. And in this, we're going to call our module web server. We're being very generic here, but I think you'll get the 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 idea of everything behind this. So let's let's we got modules. Let's make our directory of inside of modules. Let's put web server. All right, so now we've got like, this is kind of probably a, a, a standard architecture type thing that you might have. So we have our modules here, and then we have setups, which you could call this anything, but the setups might hold a multiple different configurations. So if you have like a configuration for one employee, a configuration for another employee, you might put those in the setups directory there. Uh, let's go into our modules directory. So we've got web server. So web server will be our module that we're creating. If we had another module, we could, you know, make directory foobar. You know, another module if we wanted to. Uh, see if I spell this right. So we can do that. You know, but we're, we're going to go to uh, web server. So let's see it into web server. 
And just like a regular, like what we've been doing before, we have a main.tf, you know, we're going to have that, that same type of structure. And with modules, you're going to have usually three main files. You're going to have your main.tf, a variables.tf, and an output.tf. So let's create those files now. And our variables. And you also might might have a, a readme as well. And markdown. So you can specify, you know, how to use this actual how to use the module that you're creating. So anybody that needs to use it, you can just easily they can go in and, and read the readme. And if you're gonna publish this to the, the Terraform registry, you'll want to create a re readme. All right, so let's go to our our main.tf file here and let's 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 bring over our AWS subnet and our AWS instance. Here. So let's just copy and paste that and we'll, we'll modify it slightly. But you know, we'll, we'll keep in we'll keep the VPC inside of our config, our regular configuration because um, depending on what what region you might be in or different things like that the developer might want to be able to specify their vpc but maybe you wanted to create a new vpc every time that that's more than okay it's it's kind of up to you all right so the first thing you want to do in your main.tf file in inside of your module is you want to define a a terraform block So you just have Terraform and then the curly braces. And inside that, we're going to specify a required version of Terraform. So like when you're running your, your module, you want to make sure that you specify a minimum version or an equal version that you want to, you know, support for your module. So we're going to, we're at version, uh, the current version of Terraform is 0.12 right now. So we're going to make sure that this, whoever runs our module has at least Terraform version 0.012. And we can specify greater than or equal to 0.12. No, so that just enforces whoever uses this module has at least 0.12 installed. Perk, so we got that. And then let's, let's modify some of our things here by, by using variables. So when we, when somebody calls our, our module, we want to have them pass in some data. So we're going to want to have them, you know, pass in the VPC ID, the CIDR block. We'll have them pass in the AMI, the instance type, and then we'll actually, we'll have our subnet ID here. And probably the name of the, of the, the web server that we want. So we'll, we'll do, let's see. We'll do something. Uh, let's let's call this var, you know, web server name. So just like we've done before with variables, you know, we're going to define variables, and these are going to be passed in by the person that calls our module. So let's separate this out. So then let's let's change this out. Var dot you know ami, and then. Let's do var dot instance type, and then let's do var dot vpc id, and these are going to be passed in, and we'll get to that in a second. But these are variables, just like you've done if you watched the previous videos. It's just you know declaring variables, just like we've done before. All right, so we've got let's see, we've got our basic our variables here and all that. So now we need to you know, we're saying that we need to accept some variables. So now we need to define our variables that, that people will pass in. So let's go to our variables.tf file and, and let's let's define those now. All right, so the first one we need to do a VPC and a CIDR block. So let's do variables. Uh, what did we name it? VPC ID. And then let's do type, it's gonna be string.
description is VPC ID. So we've got that. Then we need our setter block. And I'll type all these out real quick and then I'll speed up the video so you don't have to see this going on. All right, so we've got all of our variables defined now, just like we have done in the previous videos on defining variables. It's the same type of thing because, because again, modules, we've all, we've been working with modules this entire time. It's just been, we've been working in the root module. Now we're just working in a child module that we are, we are creating and we're just making it reusable. All right, so we got a subnet in our instance, our variables. Perfect. So we've got our output file here. I will go over that in just a second, but let's, um, let's call this module now. So this, so we basically have everything that we need for a module at this point. So let's go back to our main, our main file here and let's, let's call the module. So we move this and the way to call a module is instead of specifying like a resource here or a provider, we use the module keyword module. And then we can inside of here is just a unique name. You can name this anything that you want. So let's just say like Will's web server. Do that. And then the one thing you need in, the, in the, the actual configuration arguments here, the only one that is required is a source. And this source is, is a path that you need to specify what, where is your module? It's saying, all right, what module do you want? So since we stored our modules and modules web server here, we need to specify that source. So that's, that's the one we want. And since we're in the setups directory, we need to go back one, I believe, and then go to modules, web server. And then now this will pull in all of the TF files from this location. If we wanted like to use this another module, we would just name, you know, we would just do that. And that would be just fine. But we got to web server. So you can technically, if you want, this is the minimum that you would need for a, a module if, if you wanted to. But since we've, you know, we've just defined some variables and we don't have any defaults, all of these variables are required in our, in our module. So we need to pass in all of this data to our module. And the way we do that is just by specifying it here, right in the module. So, so we did, we need to do the first one is VPC ID. So let me move this over here. All right, so the first one is VPC ID here. So we can just specify VPC ID and we can pass in the value. So we want to pass in the ID from, from our resource that we are creating here. So we're going to do AWS VPC dot main dot ID. So we have that. Next thing we need is our CIDR block. So let's do, and I'm hard coding this setter block. You might not want to hard code this depending on what you have. You'll probably want to make this dynamic, but let's just do 10.0.0.0.16. Or 16. So we have that. Then I'm just going to align my equals for readability purposes. All right, so now we're passing in the VPC in the CIDR block. So let's go to our next. Now we have web server name that we'll want to do, you know, we'll just do it, you know, will. So then maybe you had multiple employees at your company, you know, you had Will, Bob, Sam, Joe, Johnny, you would have different, you would name it just like that. So now let's do AMI. So our AMI, let's go, we're, since we're in US West 2, Let's do the AMI of that. I think I I I lost that AMI. So let me let me find a, an AMI to grab. 
Uh, we'll just use this Ubuntu one. All right. And then we defined an instance type like T2 micro or, or something like that. So let, let's actually, let's put a default. Default of T2.micro. So now we don't technically have to pass in, since we added a default, we don't technically have to pass in an instance type here. You know, if we if we leave this off, it'll default to T2 micro, but maybe we want T2 medium. So we have that. All right, so we specified all the variables. So these, these variables here, you know, this source is required by Terraform for, for a child module. But here is all of our, our variables that we're passing into the module. So VPC ID cider block, that's here, VPC.cider block. So we're just doing var.vpc ID, var.cider block. So that's how you pass in variables to it or to a module. So at this point, we should be able to run this and, and create our, our instance. So let's see what happens if we do. So we're in our web modules directory. So let's go back up to get into our setups main here. Setups. All right. And then what we need to do is we need to perform Terraform init. So whenever you modify like a child module or add a new module, you need to run Terraform init. And what will happen is if you don't run Terraform init and it needs to, it'll just let you know until you need to tell you you need to run it if you try to do like Terraform apply. So if you forget, not a big deal, Terraform will just warn you saying, hey, you need to you need to run this. So good to go. So this our init has happened. So next thing, let's just do a Terraform apply or Terraform plan to see if like everything is on the up and up. You know, maybe we have some syntax errors or something like that. And let's see what happens. And no syntax errors. That was that was actually pretty fast. So we've got all that. So it's let's let's actually inspect this a little bit. So it's going to show. It's going to create our VPC, our instance. Our subnet and so forth. Let me see if I have any VPCs already in here. We might get an error for this the cider block. All right, I've got a couple. Let me. I'm gonna delete this one. Here. It's not needed anymore. All right. So we're, so let's let's apply this. This will take just a second. Uh, so that's created. So we should see our our new VPC. If we refresh here, we've got a new VPC. We didn't give it a name. We probably should have done that actually. And then we've got our our instance here, Will Web Server. So the Will Web Server is coming from our our module that we defined here, will web server. So perfect. So we've basically created a, you know, our setup using a module or using a module. And this is a very simple, very simple setup. We're just saying an AWS subnet and an AWS instance, you know, that that's very basic. You know, we're, we'd probably want to include a security group and maybe a Postgres server or something else in here. You know, it depends, but let's, 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 Start. Let's go on some to uh, explain some other things about modules. So now you you know how modules work and and what they can do. So inside of modules, you can also, you know, define a module as call a different module if you wanted to. So you could do module foobar. So we're inside. We're already inside of our module that we've created. But if we had a different module, we can we can actually call another module inside of a module. Um, you want to kind of like be careful on doing that though, 
Terraform suggests that you have, have flat modules. So you just have basically your, your root module, which is your main module module set up here, and then your one child module. So if you if you start getting nested modules, it could get very difficult to debug and everything. So so be careful defining modules inside of a, a module itself. Um, and you also don't want to like create modules just like as a, as a simple wrapper. So sometimes people will, I'll see people do like, they want to create a module just for the AWS instance. Well, you want to be careful for that because then you're just creating a bunch of modules that all it is is a wrapper and, and it can be more cumbersome than anything else. So, so be, be careful on that. It's not complete. It's not a, a, like, you know, if you need to do it, you can do it, but just be, be careful on, on what, what you would need to do it for. All right, so another thing we could do is, you know, so we've defined this outputs file here. So what we want to do is, so we have our module here, and just like we've had outputs from other things like this, so how we can access the AWS VPC main here, we can do that. Well, what if we needed values from our module that we, we created? You know, so maybe we needed to use the output of something here into like let's just say like a, a load balancer so let's do like resource so let's say we we need to do a you know attach the the web server to a load balancer we could do you know resource aws elb you know main just like a, just like a regular resource and we needed to specify the instances you know but our instances were defined in this module, so how would we access that? And the way we can do it is we can do it by by specifying an output variable, just like we did um, with any other resources or any other configurations that we've done. So let, let's specify that. So let's let's output let's output the the web server itself. So we can do we could do we could output it here. here and do value. We'll just do the AWS instance here. So AWS instance dot web server, and we'll, we'll output the entire web server. And we probably want to do a description, you know, so people will know what it is. You know, who knows what you want to call it. But now, so you can just define it like that. But let, let's move this into our, like this is perfectly valid to define your output inside of your main.tf, but let's move it into our outputs.tf because that just makes things, you know, separation of your code. So you just have your outputs in one file, your variables in one file, and then your main configuration in one file. And it makes it easier to debug and, and read the code a little bit better. So we've out. Out, so now we're outputting the the contents of our web server that we've created here. So the way we access that now, so now this this module here, so when we call this module, it's going to export a web server variable. So the way we can access that is by going to module. So we just specify module here dot then the name that we named our module wills web server and then our output name so we named it web server well, actually let's just name this instance might be better so we just name it instance so dot instance and then what we need is the actual id of that so, that, so that's how you can like access it and if you need to use it in another resource. And I'm not going to create that resource, but let's just to prove that, that this actually works, let's output the output. <laughs> that's kind of confusing. We're going to output the output of the module in our main configuration file. So you see, we're just, just to make sure we're clear on everything, we're in this main TF under setups. So this is our setups here. And, and when you're in the setups, you might have actually like, 
you might have, um, you know, you could you could have. This is probably, probably not the best architecture right here, but your setups instead of being in um, setups, you might have make directory like will here. Uh, make directory John. So you might have, you know, multiple here and then your actual, your configuration for all of your setups would be inside of these, these different folders. So each, each developer would have their own, their own web server more or less. And then you, the, your, your main.tf would be inside of these directories for, we're just doing something simple. So I've just got it stored in the, in the root setups directory, but you would probably move this main.tf into different directories here. So then John has its own state and then Will has its own state. So let's keep that in mind. All right, but let's, let's output the data from our, from our, uh, our module. We'll just call it instant data. And we can just do value module dot Will's web server dot, what did we name it? Instance? Instance. So let's clear this out so we can do that. All right, so now when we run this, it should just output the, the output here. And we only outputted one thing, but you could output multiple values from, from this web server. You can out output the, the subnet if you wanted to. You know, it's up to you. You could output a, an arbitrary value, you know. But now let's see what happens if we run Terraform Apply. So that took a second, but you can see now we ran Terraform Apply and now we out exported all of our instance data. So perfect. So we have, so we have that. So yeah, so you can, you can use your module to export other data. Or you can use your module to export the data from the module. All right. So that works. So now let's, let's move on. All right. So we have a make configuration like so we've called this module. We can also call other modules if we wanted to, you know, so we could have another module foobar and we can call that inside of our main configuration if we wanted to perfectly. Okay. Um, but let's say maybe we wanted, you know, we needed two, two web server instances for our configuration. This is, this is a really weird scenario, but I'm just, I'm just doing this as an example, but let's say we wanted, you know, a web server and we're doing us West two. But we also wanted a web server in US East one, you know, and we can do that and we can call this same exact module that we created to, to do that, you know, and so now we have our and this is great because now our codes are usable. We don't have to like copy and paste our instance and our subnet, um, our code, we can just, you know, call another module. So let's do Will's web server East, we'll call it. And then what we can do is the source. Well, actually, let's let's just copy all of this and let's modify it slightly. So our source is going to be the same. So we're using the same the same module. Our VPC is going to be different because we're going to be we're going to use a different region. So since we're going to use a different region, what we want to do is we need to specify we can specify a provider inside of our, our module. You know, just like we did source here, we can we can specify a provider. And by default, your your web your module will inherit the provider that you have specified here. And so if you don't specify a provider, it will inherit what you what provider you have set for your main configuration file. But let's say we don't want to use that default one. We want to override it and and, and add it to a different um a different re a different provider or a different region. You know, you could even have this abstracted out to Azure and AWS inside of your module. You know, you, you could definitely do that if, if you wanted to. So we can, the way we can do that is we can actually do it's called uh, specify providers and then specify a, a map or an object. And we want to specify AWS. So we can specify AWS and then just like we've done previously, we'll, we'll specify a provider with an alias. So let me copy this. So just, just the same provider, AWS region, we'll do East. 
one. And then let's do alias. And let's specify east. Our alias will just be east, like we did before in a previous video. So now this, this first module we have here will still just inherit this provider. But we want this module here to inherit to to use the AWS East one. And to do that is we can just specify our provider name here, AWS as the key, and then our alias. So then we do AWS.east. And I'm not going to run this, I'm just doing this as an example, but if we want to do this, what we would need to change is we would need to to change the, the VPC. Um, and we could get the VPC by, by you know, using date, calling data if we wanted to. We could get the, the VPC uh, and, and pass that in if we wanted to. And then maybe, you know, we just want to, instead of web server name is Will, we do Will East. And then we would change the, the, the AMI to, to whatever. And maybe we wanted a T2 large. So we could do that. And so it's probably valid to have used the same module multiple times in a configuration. You just need to make sure you have a, a unique name here. And then if you want to do two different regions, you can do that as well. And all that. And you can kind of see, like, we specified the AMI to the module. Like, if we would have not specified the AMI and we want to say, like, all right, you always have to use this AMI and specify the AMI instead of here. Well, now this that ami would be completely restricted to you know the the region that it's at so so then like this module wouldn't be that reusable like if so if we wanted to do this same scenario you know since amis are restricted to the region in aws this this wouldn't work very well it wouldn't be that that reusable so so keep that in mind when designing your modules, just like any programming language, it's better to pass in data to your, to your module because it makes it a lot more reusable and flexible on doing different things. And another thing that we could have actually done, and this is, at the time that I'm recording this video, is Terraform's at version 0.12. But currently, point, um, one three is in beta. It just got released into beta uh, like a week ago, not even. And what they allow is you can do. Um, if you remember the the uh, meta attribute uh, video from uh, from a few videos back, in resources you could specify like a count of two, and it would create the resources twice. And you could also do a like a for each, and you could do depends on. Well, in, in Terraform 0.12, you can't do those inside of modules. But in the next release of 0.13, you can specify a count inside of the module. You know, so maybe you had reasons that you, you could pass in variables that you didn't want to create the module or, you know, to specify a count of zero or you wanted to create multiple of the same. You can do count or for each might be might be even a better a better example for, for modules um, so you, you can specify the for each just in the same exact way that you do on resources um, so you can do that so so keep that in mind if you're on 0.13 you can do you can take advantage of the count for each and depends on inside of modules just like you do for resources but 0.12 version of terraform does not support that Another thing on modules is we've, for the source, we've specified the source as a local, a local, um, a local path. So since we're getting the source from our, our local directory, this is easy to do that. But if we were using a, a module from the Terraform reg registry, you could specify a, a URL to that. I'm not going to go into remote modules much in this. I want to do like how you can develop your own locally. Uh, another video might go into you know using the uh, remote modules. I wanted to kind of go over how to create all of the modules and everything. Um, so 
I think that's all that it, there is right now to go over with on modules that I've covered today. Uh, so make sure you hit the subscribe button below to not miss out on any future videos. And I will see you in the next video.